the mic so it's working. Thank you, Tommy, and thank you for inviting and giving a space here. Um, it's, it's very nice to come and visit and be very much a little bit out of my comfort zone. I'm not in my regular work, in my life where I most of the life, like 80% is, is just with the people collaborating and creating conditions for learning together and making experiments together about collaborations. Like you said, it's, uh, I, I have this um, background of, of psychology which I almost forgot long time ago. <laughs> I have not been in that profession a lot. Over 20 years, more more with the groups and, and, and big systems. And today, I I think I'm uh, trying to look this uh, theme about uh, creating knowledge that is informing us uh, in a complex environment when you have all. I'm not defining. I, I come to the complex with the word and. and all that, how, it, how, how to understand it. But like you, in an art process, you have a lot of different professionals collaborating. So everybody is, is creating from their own perspectives the knowledge, and this combination uh, should be quite, or to have a good result, it should create collective knowledge together all the time, which is very fussy, but it's all the time creating knowledge. Like this moment is also, that all these interactions, even you are silent, you just move a little or whatever, you are creating knowledge together, making sense some way about, is this useful or what I am doing here. So this knowledge, is, is really something that uh, it's, it's in the center of struggle in, in every organization. <coughs> I just came from the, today I came from this uh, place of, of the Prime Minister office and just uh, doing a little bit collaboration work there. <laughs> <laughs> which in the, in the new sense it sounds so funny and not helping that process but, but they are really trying to make some collaboration there and, and my work is more there on the, on the staff level which is, they are like paid every month and they are not so easily kick off and, but it's, uh, it's funny to see how the talking is, is making things different there when the situation totally changes from one week to another, like today compared to the last week beginning when I was there. It's, it's the knowledge creation between people, it's, it's really different. And I, I think I try to start with a very practical thing. Yoki, can you help me? Yes. To just start with, with a little experiment. Or going to the slides. Uh, must have been finished. Uh, we have two kind of uh, uh, words here. And I ask everybody just to take one from the file and, and one from the yoke. Okay. So you can this to go here. Yeah. I was kind of suggesting that one. You can take a little bit this. Simple, I just have one color. 
Okay, so we, <laughs> they have blue ones, so okay. you can keep the other color on that. some kind of a combination, which is now random. It's a metaphor. And what I'm asking you to do is just uh, look about oh. this situation where we are now, these two days. Uh, oh, sorry, in Finnish, should we, for people who are English, should we yeah. translate? No idea. Okay. okay. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Great. <laughs> so they are Finnish. They are Finnish. Oh, no. What? what? Oh God! Even the English one says, "Oh God." Okay. Maybe you can help the ones who are there in English. If you are in two or three years, you just tell a story about through this metaphor. Like I'm picking just one here. Oh no, that's too help. Easy to take something like, like this way. So. Well, I get two very nice ones. <laughs> Only this is like a, in Finnish, it's mielekkyyden huoppa. Uh, but uh, what I'm asking here to do is to tell the story about two days through this metaphor. How are you personally seeing these two days with this friend? Just few words, words, you don't have to make a big story, just try to say something about it. How can you say something about your expectations, your thoughts about, with this frame, about these two days that are coming? You don't have to share it after this, you just can try to tell some story. <laughs> I, I interrupt you, you maybe are in the middle of sharing still, but I think you get some idea while I'm continuing about this. The basic idea is that uh, uh, about information and meaning and sense making. But there is no sense making without the context, without the frame. So these two days you created a lot of different stories. Because of the frame you have there. That was a random, but still it changed the some way the the interpretation and the meaning of, of the days. It doesn't mean that that's the only meaning. But it means that when people are collaborating, we are normally forgetting that the meaning is coming only through the context. It's not never spoken in a way collaboration. You don't ask about it, what's the context, what's the point of view. We start more to share information that is kind of a thing that is easily thought that it's like a stable, it's something that it's not unstable. <laughs> that, yeah, this is two days and we have this guys coming here or the, or the ladies coming here and so on. But, actually, what does it, what, what's the meaning of everything it needs about this context? And the first of all, I think, uh, you all might have a little bit different context to participate here. And what is the context that is connecting you together? Making some <coughs> kind of a pattern while you are here. It's not very obvious. It's, it's actually needing you to be collaborating each other. So, I'm uh, uh, thinking that the complex systems are created when there is a lot of different 
uh, actors coming together and their actions and thoughts are interwoven. Is that the word? Yeah. Interwoving together. It means here that you, how your stories are interlinked and how they start to change each other's. Like when you were sharing the story, you get already, I think, changed some way from the other person. So it's happening there that when the system has a lot of different <coughs> actors, it is starting to change all the time. It's unstable in a way. And how people are tolerating this is that they create rules to make some uh, some way easier to tolerate this chaos that is there in this in this uh, collaboration and uh, it used to be so that the rules used to be very strict they were more like you do this or you get the punishment <laughs> And that is helping sometimes uh, people to collaborate. But the more free the rules are, the more open they are for collaboration, the more simple they are. They are more near than the complex systems, which means that uh, we only have like the birds in the flock. When the birds are flying together in a flock, uh, they obey only three very open rules. The one is that I need to um, fly this as much as possible the same speed with the next one. And the second one can be that I try to avoid uh, obstacles that are coming outside, but I'm not hitting them. And the third one is I keep the distance like the same all the time. And then when the flock is going, it's really unpredictable. It's new forms, it's getting new forms all the time. But it's only still having those simple rules, three ones, to go. You don't have to punish, they just try to go with that. And they perform a very creative uh, system. And that's also one idea about looking what kind of a help a complex system needs to collaborate. So if you have a lot of different professionals coming together, one thing is that they don't do rules that are very strict, but they need to create some rules that are helping them to evaluate their actions while they are doing all the time. It's like online understanding are what are we doing. That's why they are many times <coughs> created so that you put first the verb there. Like, uh, it can be like uh, we, we teach and learn. I try to teach and learn at the same time. So, if we are collaborating here, I, uh, I can make this question soon that how are you now teaching and learning in this moment? Because sometimes you become just a learner too long, and sometimes just a teacher too long. So it's not kind of a rule that uh, is not then maybe in use, but if you put it in the use that, that we need this time to reflect, quite fast many times about how we are learning and how we are teaching so that we can take everyone's knowledge inside the group and in that way help this flock of professionals to, to co-create to co-create more uh, faster and, and, and in a way more 
productive way, which even if it is unpredictable. It's, it's quite unpredictable because we don't know where we go, but the learning in the complex systems is then the main thing you will start to use with these rules. You start to make push the system to learn, the interaction to learn. And I, I'll, I'll try to with few let's see if I can uh, it's here. I'm using a lot of metaphors from the forest here to uh, describe the collaboration and, uh, and the idea why it's, it's this thing that uh, this data, this information which I'm calling now here the warm data which is only 10 years old. It's like coined very uh, recently, uh, it's not like a worldwide known, uh, but it has been spread a lot, and and it's it's kind of a new way of trying to understand this information people are co-creating together, how they are, what they are doing when they are uh, collaborating with their environment and, and together. And the forest is example there because in the forest we easily see a lot of trees or we see animals or we see kind of actors like professional actors there, whatever they can be, trees or animals somewhere. But that's not the forest. It's, uh, at least in Finnish we have this saying that nähdä metsä huilta. Maybe it's in English too that, that how can you see the forest from the trees. <coughs> it can be like that. Because the idea about the forest is something that you can now think about. What, what do you think? What is the forest? What creates forest? And how is that different than a tree or an animal? And I'm thinking here, or saying here, that this idea between animals, between the plants, uh, is is called here that they are inter they have these interrelationships and that connection how they share and co-create information between each other is warm data it's very hard to pull out from the forest how the whole forest is working <laughs> you need to focus no more you focus on the trees or you focus on the idea how the fungus and the trees are collaborating. So you take like two, two things to collaborate. But how the whole complex system is collaborating, it's a tricky question. But that's the idea also about the wholeness. It's also the high idea about the wholeness of the art project so that it contains everyone there and everyone in the different context also. You are collaborating in the context of science here and, and the context of art here and in the context of economy here and business politics and whatever. So the work is, is having a lot of context at the same time which is making this warm data challenging. And the quality of the warm data is that it's, uh, it's something 
like every complex system is having this quality. It's something you can revert. You can come back and put it together. This is this guy from the uh, Lewis Carroll's book, the guy who is the egg and the and that children's story. He is sitting there on on the fence and dropping down and and breaking himself. And then whatever you have in the world, however knowledge or whatever, you can't put him back anymore. It's like in the complex system, you can't come back and repeat the system. You have your family, your relations there, and sometimes you wish that, okay, maybe I could have this rewind button. <laughs> I can't make this again. Uh, let's, let's let's make agreement that nothing happened and and uh, let's start again. But it's not any more possible. Everything already changed, and you just need to go on uh, with the information that, that has been already created there. And in our uh, society. <coughs> We have these big questions, we have, they are called like wicked problems, I don't know how many have been heard about this sentence, the wicked problem means the problem you can't solve. So it's not getting finished, the problem. It's like a children. I have a children I, I made today, it's fine, but tomorrow I need to solve that problem again. Or whatever. Uh, marriage. It's not solved once and then it stays there. It doesn't stay. It all the time moves. It's moving and it's changing and we need to solve that again and again and again during the whole life. And in that sense when the problem is like that, in the global level climate change, and social welfare, whatever, big problems of society, they are all wicked problems. We need to create processes that are guiding us to go forward, because we can't order someone to make the solution. Like the last hundred years, we were, people were believing a lot that there is some expert coming and having data to solve problems. There is wicked problems, but the wicked problems were the ones that we can't solve. We just need to try our best all the time and learn so that the next step is better than the last one. Here's a small list about those concepts. I'm not going inside, only a few of those and there, there can be a lot of more. Uh, but this wicked problem and the idea about this information that is different, it's meaning that in the, in the collaborative knowledge you are more on this line where the transformation happens between the people so that the whole system changes. It becomes like this moment that you you are uh, collaborating and, and, and you feel that now the thing is different. It has gone over the transformation. It's not something linear like that. I'm planning this art project is now in the phase 0 0.1 and now it's in the 0 0.5 or we are learning together in some very predictable ways. It's not possible. Even we make this plan that, that we start on the 1st January and we are <laughs> ready on the end of January because you don't know what's happening. So the question is that what kind of uh, collaboration and knowledge you need to create uh, to give best possible conditions for these transformations that might happen. 
Here is the one minute about this. This idea about uh, reforming all the time without plan, without leader, they are all the time organizing and reproducing the shapes, the forms, <coughs> with these simple rules, I would say. This was a big challenge to the whole science, <laughs> the, the physical science and the, and the science, science that could reduce back. They think that we can separate things and learn how they are happening. But you can trace back how this is done. There is no single thing that is ordering or making it happen. They are just following some rules to learn to collaborate and, and create these new forms. a mechanistical way of uh, seeing things because it's just putting a line between the things they are not changing they are like separate balls there and they are staying like that and when we are looking a living system we need to speak about how we are interdependent. We, we need each other and in what way this need is happening so that how I am needing and how is this affecting to the other one and what are we becoming now as we are doing this interconnected collaboration. It's easy when you have two people. We can even talk about it. <laughs> and we can make this kind of a reflection that what are we becoming now when we do this? But when there is more actors, and when we start to look this from more contexts, you took those playful contexts there in the beginning thinking if I'm here with Tommy and we start to talk about that <coughs> what's happening right now here and what do you think we are becoming now talking like this that I'm more in the voice and you are more in the silent and, and we have some communication that what is this wholeness coming but what if we are putting this wholeness to the different context okay, so if you look this from the context of the of the of this school or from the science or if you look at from the uh, perspective of the family we start to get even a lot of layers there that are all also interlinked so they are affecting to each other so it becomes also very soon a messy thing and the question cries that how can we live with this messiness of meanings that we are creating? And that's why uh, one thing is that it's so good 
to make experiments about different kinds of simple rules so that we learn that we can we are becoming in many ways all the time. We are forming us, we have we become something all the time. But we can try to understand with some simple rules how they are helping us to understand what should we do next. And the simple rules are always evaluated in some way. Are they helping us to decide, make decisions what to do next? And then we start to learn that, okay, these simple rules, they didn't help us to go forward in this environment where we are like doing an art performance or uh, learning something or or whatever, like here in this forest, all these uh, things, they are interconnected in the way that they try to adapt and learn from each other all the time. The timescale is not as fast as here. <laughs> the, the scale of the time can be very long, but they do that. And I'm giving a, a one and a half minute video also here about this visual example about this uh, simple rules and, and how they are creating these processes. Let's see if it's working. Yeah. To show you what I mean, to show you both order and chaos can emerge on their own from a simple system with feedback. So, feedback is the idea that when we talk, you are telling about how things are, what, what sense you make about this, and I tell about how I make sense about that, and so it's like a loop going on where we don't know where it's gone. It's like very unpredictable thing, and here this is made with the digital things. I'm going to do what seems at first glance like a rather trivial experiment. This screen behind me is connected up to the camera that's filming me, but the camera in turn is filming me with the screen. This creates a loop with multiple copies of me appearing on the screen. This is a classic example of a feedback loop. We get a picture in a picture in a picture. At first it seems fairly predictable, but as we zoom the camera in, some pretty strange things begin to happen. The first thing I notice is that the object I'm filming stops bearing much resemblance to what now appears on the screen. But it was just this guy made a match and the flame is there and very soon because of this continuous feedback, feedback will start to live its life of its own. It, it's it's becoming totally something else than the flame. Small changes in the movement of the match become rapidly amplified as they loop round from the camera to the screen and back to the camera. <coughs> so even though I can describe each step in the process mathematically, I still have no way of predicting how tiny changes in the flickering of the flame will end up in the final image. This is the butterfly effect in action. So the butterfly effect, they mean this idea that tiny, tiny changes are giving results that are really big. It's big possibility. And now I'm talking about like here, the tiny changes of our conversation uh, 
guidelines or collaboration guidelines principles we are doing, evaluating this, and how we are fast learning. The more fast we learn, the more fast the changes are there, these butterfly effects can be done. The less we do this, or we cut the whole communication, uh, we can be in a very nice state of school, school. And, and if nothing happens, we just keep the things like they are. And that's the idea about, of course, how to rule the country sometimes. We just make the no communication and no papers and nothing, you, or you just order what, what people can, how people can be connected. And the development is more predictable. But now, here comes the spooky bit. With just a slight tweak to the system, these strange and rather beautiful patterns begin to emerge. The same system, one that's based on simple rules with feedback, produces chaos and order. saying that <clears throat> this is coming from the flame and uh, they're saying that the simple rules that are guiding this feedback and this connection there uh, they start to evolve and they start to uh, develop something that is very chaotic because we don't know it is just looping there all the time and making it the different what's happening in this in this relation but the patterns so some repeating patterns start always to emerge there and that's the idea also for collaboration between groups or between processes is that when you have some simple rules there you become sensitive about the patterns, what happens between people in this process. What is something that is we are repeating? And what's something totally new that is like an a exception about these patterns? During the last century in the organizations or in the groups, I don't know how it's, it's with you, but in the, in the work processes, they didn't have these basic questions. Like after the meeting, they ask, what was there something that we had not repeated? It is something totally new. Is that how is that valuable? Should we know this or should we skip it? To ask and have few minutes always, what was happening in this uh, interaction that was different? And was that different, meaningful, important? And how can we be using that and make that fast? So the last part of this uh, um, feedback experiment here. Is, uh, the same mathematics is generating chaotic behavior and pattern behavior. This changes completely how you think about all of this. The idea that there are regularities in nature and then totally separately from them are irregularities and these are just two different things. It's just not true. These are two ends of a spectrum of behavior which can be generated by the same kind of mathematics. And it so this idea here from, that from the collaboration of the teams or groups is that, that uh, even we give the freedom to people to collaborate, it, it can create chaos, chaos. But if we create structures that are guiding with the simple rules for them to learn about what patterns, what are we doing, what are we repeating, what is new things, they are doing uh, something that is not in the hand of anyone. <laughs> they are like really co-creating something new. Something that is, is 
many times amazing between, between the people. And, uh, and here <coughs> I give you a uh, discussion after this two minutes. It means here is an example about from uh, maybe someone of you who are doing more of this computer learning uh, programming. But this is a little bit old, like four years back. But it's a story about uh, about the learning through this continuous looping, creating these connections. And uh, one thing that we found in there, particularly in our original research, is how powerful evolution is as a as a system. As an so they are speaking about evolution, but they are speaking evolution mainly in this sense how they are. Uh, doing this learning in interaction very fast. Algorithm to create something that is very complex and to create something that's very adaptive. Torsten and his team's goal was nothing less than to use computerized evolution to create a virtual brain that would control a virtual body. To begin with, they created a hundred random brains. As you can see, they weren't up to much. Evolution then took over. The computer selected the brains that were slightly better at moving their bodies and got them to breed. The algorithm then takes those individuals that do the best and it allows them to create offspring. The best movers of the next generation were then bred together and so on and on. Amazingly, after just 10 generations, although they are still a bit unsteady, the figures could walk. Eventually, miraculously, you actually end up with something that works. Um, the slightly scary thing is you don't know why it works and how it works. You look at that brain and you have no idea actually what's going on because... And this is also about the collaboration between people and professions. We don't want to show you why it works, but you need this, you need this idea about, of, of doing it all the time, evaluating it all the time, and selecting the small bits of, of collaboration that is more useful, more productive. It is based on the rules you are creating there together for the collaboration all the time. Evolution has optimized it automatically. In 20 generations, evolution has turned this into this. But these evolved computer beings soon went far beyond just walking. They evolved to do things that really are impossible to program conventionally. They react realistically to unexpected events, like being hit or falling over. Even though we program these algorithms, what actually then happens when it unfolds life, we don't control it anymore, and things happen that we never expected. And it's, it's quite a funny feeling that you create these algorithms, but then they do their own thing. unthinking process of evolutionary trial and error has created these virtual creatures that can move and react in real time. What we're seeing here is fantastic experimental evidence for the creative power of systems based on simple rules. Data 
which is idea that how this uh, looping and interaction not only between people but mainly between the context people have in mind how those contexts that are are uh, in the art process you can like create that here's the context of learning or there can be whatever the contexts and uh, you can uh, how can you do and make people to talk and understand what are we doing together so that all these contexts can interact with each other in practice maybe I try to say it is this idea that that uh, we can create here a small house, like three chairs <coughs> in six places in this room and we name this trio here with uh, some context like let's say that if the context can be uh, a new product something uniqueness there can be some other context and then people have the main question from that process. They create the question they want to solve and then they go first in this group and talk about that question from that context. And it's free then to go and walk here. We have like one hour, one and a half hour. And you go another context and you continue this thinking together from this new context but you start to carry that context in your mind and it starts to affect <laughs> you are here and then you start your mind start to connecting these two and then you walk to the third one and there again it starts to change what's happening in your mind and when you are you do this or everybody starts to be very much uh, aware about how meaning is different in this context but not only this that they are different how they are interacting and making some new meanings and those are that understanding we can call like a warm data it's understanding how at the same time there are many contexts interacting and it needs some work to make it Happen. But the idea about this warm data is putting dots together is the idea that then you get more whole picture about what we are doing and where we are. You don't have only like technological points or you don't have some other points there, but you have more and you are aware about what's happening and how they are interconnected at this moment and affecting to each other and the decision making after that in the, in the concrete uh, questions is much wiser that's the experience, experience about the groups that have been working putting them in these situations where they can talk differently and then make decisions so before we get that, um, and yeah, no, we don't get the big questions together, but let's make so that let's take a pair and someone who is next to you, and uh, and don't you don't have to tell anything, but you, you need to ask <laughs> like what's there in your mind just now? It can be whatever. It don't have to be. It can be that I didn't get anything or in my mind I find something but be curious about what is there happening just what's, what is the neighbor of you just thinking or feeling right now in this moment and three minutes about this so you can share only the top experience what is in your mind or body now okay but you just can 
take next one so ask about it.
Oh. I have trouble uh, figuring out the system. What are the components of the system? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, oh, yes, yes. Yeah, I, 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 I can't. Yeah. What, what are the components <laughs> of the system? Yeah. Here. Yeah. Good. I'm not going to answer yet. Yeah. Maybe a little bit later, but let's see. Let's take a few. <laughs> Nice. <laughs> uh, we were discussing, or I was, I was thinking about uh, some kind of the question of sens like, uh, sensitivity. It was, it was uh, how to recognize some kind of uh, uh, patterns which are related to the forest or some kind of wholeness. And also it's, it's related to this kind of looping. Looping and how to, how to recognize when you have like, looping experiences, like how to recognize this kind of, or be sen sensitive to this kind of uh, hints that, okay, this is something which is repeating itself, and when things are changed a little bit, so also the, the result is changing. This, I can relate to this kind of, uh, when we're like uh, uh, teaching, or uh, we are like planning the teaching, or making this kind of round, if we have this kind of, a, every semester is like a, this kind of a looping yeah. structure. Yeah. Yeah. Let's take one one more, please. Just put something in the in the system. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, we we made this this may be fun or not, but uh, we were discussing about how uh, how to uh, uh, make this situation of seminar or whatever thing a bit better and how to uh, move uh, your kind of perception or focus or uh, uh, your visual senses towards the information and which would be and in this way the information would come even better back to me so this uh, stream of my consciousness or focus and go in there and the information coming back. Uh, something like this. <laughs> Good. Yeah, we have many such experiences. <laughs> you want? Okay. Okay, we can close close here and uh, and, uh, and you know it's uh, some of you are very familiar with the system thinking in, in from some perspective right now and, and then the idea about that in the systems you have always parts. Here I didn't want to just define any, any specific part, maybe people or groups or whatever, but it's more about this interrelatedness. How is that happening? How they are making sense together, whatever they are. Are they institutions or are they are they spaces, like you have a, a, a space that a, a group of friends are coming together, a class is coming together, how that class is having <coughs> connection with another class. Or whatever are the things, the, the relatedness is, is the thing that is there making the sense. And that's the idea about the evolution, it's not about some, someone is wise or stupid or strong or anything. It's only about this idea how it is connected and what are the uh, possibilities and channels to connect. And the most, the biggest word there was this one data, which was the idea that uh, it's all the time, all, always in a many level. But anyway, if you pick only this connectedness and start to talk about and create conditions for different kind of a, of a, of a looping and take this idea there that it's, it's not about what we have been so much thought about in the nature films that there are wise guys in the art or there are good guys or whatever they are or there are lions in the 
who are the kings or whatever, but it's the environment, it's the surrounding and the connection to the surrounding. How is that happening? And what are you learning there? Which is that it's the most important thing, developing somewhere. Something that is new, something that's out there. Okay. So to me, I think it, I close here. Okay, yes, thank you. Thanks. So, um, do, do somebody uh, wants to ask a question after, mm -hmm. even, even though there was a possibility to reflect a little bit, but uh, if, if somebody wants to also have a direct immediate question uh, to you, Kopecka, now, before the next presenter is continuing. Okay, if not, we are moving. Oh, oh yes, yes. Uh, well, thank you. We stop. Well, I think this is the question. <laughs> <laughs> yes. I was thinking about coming from the context of sound. I was thinking about amplification, so that, or sensitization in the sense so that you have a system and then you are kind of creating this feedback loop. But are, there, or are, are those relevant contexts? Core concepts in this context, so we are thinking so that if we are sensitizing the system to some kind of environmental factor or something like that, so that is that the possibility to create change also? Maybe it, it, it is like that uh, example there about this video that it's the way that you are connecting things, it, it creates. And if you are taking that as a metaphor between people, and uh, and you think that how you create information might be wise when you start to think about how to collaborate and how to use these ideas uh, in thinking. So you start to like think about the channels and ways how they are doing this looping and that, that's how the, the new organizations are doing when they speak about the startups or whatever they are speak about the ways they are uh, creating uh, environments for uh, new thinking and, and behaving and decision making and knowledge making about where we are like in the fast programming uh, styles that are having these different kind of meetings, they change about how they meet, they change about how they talk, they, they are changing about all the time how they are interacting, and when they are stabilizing that some way, they start to produce always the same results. So, simple way to understand this, when you talk, to, when the same guys are talking the same ways, you get the same results. The new thing needs always disturbance. You need to disturb, otherwise nothing happens. You just keep on repeating the same the thoughts. It's like at home. When you talk the same things, you get the same results. So, how the channels can be changed? Uh, what is the tweak in the system <laughs> that you can do? And when you, if you have the tweak in the mind or the learning, Think about that how the how the forest in the forest how the forest is thinking together. There's a great documentary in the in the Finnish arena, the TV now you can look about the Finnish forest. It's three times twenty minutes, but it's about how the intelligence and thinking and communication is happening in the forest between everything. It's just very new there, but it's also something that is exploding the idea about the system that is living and actually they see and they sense and they think which normally have been thought that humans are doing that <laughs> but in that they, they put it very clear that forests are doing those whole things we are doing and, and there's a lot of things just to apply also to the 
generations and then we recreate it. To do really what work. And I think the art is the way of uh, creating information that is not possible uh, uh, in, in the traditional ways, where you create only information about easily about the, how much are you waiting, or what your height, or some numbers, and so on. But this idea about what's happening between people, sometimes you can only create art about that, what's happening, how they are interconnected, and what, what is happening there. The art is giving the best form for that. And you need to put that in the loop. And what about thinking that it's not art, it's just information that we need to loop all the time and learn about from that. <laughs> so it's also a different kind of way to use art as information and fast learning. I will get theater studies and media studies as well as in theater and performance from 2013 until autumn 2018. She had been senior researcher at the Center for 